guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Beth. I am a 37 year old attorney living in the DC area with my husband. And for today's video, I am going to film a collective Ulta haul. Uh, so this is going to encompass like the 10 times the points days for platinum members and the 21 days of beauty and few other orders scattered in along the way. So uh, if you enjoy this type of content, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. Uh, I used to film these a little bit more frequently, but now they're kind of a little bit fewer and far between. Uh, the last, I think, Alta focused video I filmed was kind of a demo of products that were going to be on sale during the 21 Days of Beauty. So I'll talk a little bit about some of the items I did choose to pick up uh, during the 21 Days of Beauty and those that I skipped over. And just to kind of give you an idea of how I'm going to structure this video, so uh, I'm just going to kind of go chronologically uh, through the orders I've placed since July. So this will be July, August, and half of September. And for several of these orders, I did get one of the larger gifts with purchase. Uh, so I'm just going to save all of that towards the end. So if you're not interested in gifts with purchase, you can just kind of um, click out at that point. Uh, but I'm just going to kind of do like a grab bag type situation of all the different little samples I got. And I'll probably throw in pictures of the gift with purchase if I can find them in my email uh, as I talk about each order, just so you have a frame of reference for uh, what I got with each order. And I feel like I should <laughs> address the, it's not elephant in the room, I guess the hair in the room. Uh, so no need to call Brad Mondo. I didn't uh, bleach my hair or anything like that, but uh, you don't have to adjust your, your monitor because it is a little bit on the orange side. So I did get my hair done yesterday, and so I usually get highlights, and then my stylist tones uh, the highlights. So uh, normally they just do some sort of toner to help prevent this kind of situation, to prevent it from looking orange. But personally, I don't like it when it looks super kind of stark blonde on me. Uh, so the last couple times I've been going to the hairstylist, we've just been playing with the toners a little bit. Last time it was a little bit more pink. This time I said I wanted to go a little bit more copper. Uh, it did look a little bit like a carrot had been massacred in the shampoo bowl as I was getting it done. So um, these carrots have been murdered. Yes. Much poor old carrots. That's, that's beastly. Uh, yeah, this is just temporary. It's going to wash out after a few washes. So, so it's just a little bit fun. Um, I probably wouldn't want it to be this color permanently, but I'm just enjoying it for the time being. So uh, anyway, that is the hair. Uh, and I will say that I am wearing almost a full face of the makeup that I've hauled from Ulta in the last few months. Uh, it's not entirely new, but uh, I thought I would just go ahead and apply it and then I'll reference whatever I have picked up that's new uh, instead of applying it on camera because that just takes so much longer to film and edit. So uh, going back to July, so um, a little bit of a preview of a forthcoming video. Uh, I purchased the, and I apologize if I butcher this, this is the Tresluce, I think is how she says it, uh, La Flor de Mexico palette. And hopefully sometime in the next week I will be able to film a kind of comparison video of Tresluce and Araceli Beauty. So you may have heard kind of some internet drama surrounding these two brands over the summer, so I kind of wanted to do a kind of side-by-side -side comparison. Uh, I will say, now that I've kind of gotten myself into talking about it, I know we're in the beginning of Hispanic or Latinx um, Heritage Month, so that video is going to be more about celebrating Latinx brands rather than trying to pit them against each other. But anyway, I'll get more into it in that video, but I just wanted to kind of put that out there. Obviously I'm a very white um, individual. So uh, yeah, so that is what the palette looks like. So I will look forward to playing with this. It looks like there are some very kind of pretty everyday shades as well as some more colorful ones. And the cool thing about this one as well is that they made the mirror removable so it's magnetized into the palette which i thought was a really kind of interesting way of doing it so uh, i got that and then i also got this intenso liner in the shade accomplished and um i did just swatch it on my hand because i wasn't sure if i would want to use it today and 
Um, it's definitely not not wiping off. So like I said, I will be trying this and exploring all the different Tresluce and Araceli products that I have picked up um, in a future video. Uh, and the last thing is not that exciting, but um, I did get this um, TheraBreath um, mouthwash. Uh, so I found out about this through the podcast Breaking Beauty, I think it's called. And essentially it is two Canadian former beauty editors. So uh, they have this podcast where they talk about all kinds of different uh, beauty, hair care, skin care, perfume, makeup, all the things, right? Uh, so they had talked about this in the days leading up to Amazon's Prime Days, I think it is. So uh, they had recommended this and I decided to pick it up and lo and behold, it is at Ulta. So uh, I am saving or hoarding my Ulta points to buy a Dyson Airwrap, at least, you know, try to get most of the purchase paid for that way. And so I figured why not purchase some essentials from Ulta to kind of uh, accrue those points. So that was it for July. I think that order I did get $10 off. They had some kind of coupon that I was able to use. So that was great. Okay, so moving on to August. So the Platinum and Diamond Day in August. Uh, generally every, like the first Monday of every month, Ulta will have a Platinum or Diamond Day where they have uh, special deals for Platinum and Diamond uh, members. And those are members who um, are part of the Ulta Rewards program and they spend a certain amount at Ulta every year. So sometimes they have really great things that I take advantage of and sometimes they don't and I just abstain from participating. Uh, so this one was really great actually. So for this particular Diamond Day, uh, I like saying Diamond Day because it's alliterative but Platinum Diamond Day etc. Uh, so anyway, so they had the Clinique Even Better Corrector. This was a free gift with purchase if you spent I don't know, probably $25 or whatever. So I did demo this in my like Ulta 21 days demo, uh, along with the Clinique Even Better Concealer that was in the 21 days of beauty sale. Uh, but I think this is a relatively new product. So it was really cool to be able to try this out for free. Um, so I will refer you to that video if you'd like to see my thoughts on it. I think this comes in a couple of different shades and it has, obviously like a doe foot and then this little sponge, which I don't think comes out, which is kind of odd. Uh, but anyway, that is the Clinique Even Better Corrector. And I thought I would go ahead and swatch it next to next to some other correctors. So this is the uh, Smashbox slash Becca Corrector in Fair slash Light. Uh, this was another item in the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty. Uh, I actually, was able to purchase this from Target uh, because Target does carry some Ulta products. And I guess they follow whatever kind of sales or discounts Ulta is doing on um, products like this. So um, yeah, so you can see the Clinique is much more pigmented. These are both the lightest shade in the range, but I think there's only two of the Clinique versus like four in the Becca. So I used the Becca today and you can see it's obviously lighter as a shade and is also more lightweight. So I think it kind of depends on what you want. So if you want something that you could kind of wear on a lighter makeup day and not have to worry as much about kind of covering the actual like orangeness of it, uh, if you're my skin tone anyway, uh, I would say the Becca is definitely a good way to go. Uh, if you want some heavy duty color correction, obviously the Clinique is going to do a little bit more for you. And I did also pull out the Charlotte Tilbury corrector, which has been my kind of go-to of late. So it's in a little pan and let's see, I'd say it's kind of midway between the two in terms of both color and pigment level. So I always do wear a corrector underneath my concealers because I have very severe dark circles. You can check out the uh, Becoming Khaki video that I just uploaded um, to see how I kind of look without any under eye corrector. Uh, in that video, I use the Kosas Revealer Concealer for reference. So that was a free product. I also purchased the Clinique SPF 50. Uh, this is a mineral based um, sunscreen for your face and I had tried and gone through several of the SPF 30 in this type of format, but I think they have discontinued that. 
I don't think it has a very strong smell, which is a plus. Some of the SPF, higher SPF products that I've tried do have kind of a smell to them. But it does, I think, have a fairly significant white cast, like even for my skin tone. So, I don't know. I, I like having a higher SPF on hand, but I'm not sure that I would really recommend that one that much. But the good thing about SPF products is that if you have a flexible spending account, like I always mention, uh, you can submit your receipt, can be from Ulta, it doesn't have to be from like, you know, a drugstore or whatever. Uh, you can submit your receipt for sunscreen type products to be reimbursed. So, I mean, it's not free, but it's definitely easier to try out multiple sunscreens that way. So um, that was the Clinique. And then I also got a gift with purchase that was three little Nest Votives. So this was definitely something that kind of pushed me over the edge in terms of placing an order. Um, so these little Nest Votives, there's the uh, new Wellness Wild Mint and Eucalyptus. There's the new Wellness Driftwood and Chamomile. And then there's also, I think their classic Ocean Mist and Sea Salt. And I've tried a couple of these, as you can see. This one is just really nice and fresh. I like this size actually because it's kind of perfect to just perch on the side of my bathtub when I'm taking a bath. I don't have to worry about keeping the candle lit so it kind of pools out evenly. Um, it's kind of close enough that I can smell it and I don't have to worry about it kind of tipping off the ledge. So yeah, this one is really nice. This is the Driftwood and Chamomile. Uh, so these newer scents I was definitely happy to try. And Ness is not an inexpensive candle brand. Um, this one is really nice as well. Um, I'm not always the biggest fan of like a mint or eucalyptus scent, but something about these together is just really nice and fresh without being too kind of astringent. So I really um, have been enjoying those. Okay, so that was the Nest gift with purchase. And then I also picked up for my husband his I don't know if it's his favorite because I think there's like a number seven or boots tea tree cleanser that he had been using in the UK and this is kind of his substitute for it. But this is the uh, Body Shop Tea Tree Skin Clearing Foaming Cleanser. Uh, so he has obviously more, I guess, oily or acne prone skin than I do. Um, this is probably not a product I would pick out for him if I were designing his skincare routine, but um, it is what he likes to use. And generally, once he finds something, um, he kind of sticks with it. Maybe I will throw this into the Paula's Choice Beautypedia just to kind of see what they say about it. But anyway, I got one of these for him and you will see these kind of pop up throughout this video. Like I said, if I can kind of purchase basically household staples and get points for it, then um, that is a win in my book. Uh, speaking of which, um, so mid-August there was a 10 times the points offer and I think there was another $10 off coupon or something. So um, I ended up getting four of these. So I think now he has like six backups. So most people say that you shouldn't kind of stockpile things like that, but I know that he will go through this and that kind of saves me from worrying about it for a few months. Uh, so I got four of those. Uh, and then I also got a foaming hand soap from the Ulta brand. This is in the Sparkling Leaves scent. So this is kind of a limited edition fall scent. I think I did purchase this last year as well and we used it up and I really enjoyed the scent of it. So um, personally, I really like the smell. To me, it's just kind of lightly floral almost. It does seem to be slightly less drying than like the foaming hand soaps from Bath and Body Works, but I can't say that for sure. I will also say that I think Ulta scents tend to be a little bit more simplistic than Bath and Body Works. So if you, if you really enjoy the heavily fragranced kind of more, I guess, unique scents that Bath and Body Works might have, I don't know if you'd be satisfied with Ulta, but Ulta does have a lot of sales on its products um, fairly frequently and I don't know, I just, I really like this scent. So um, got this foaming hand soap. Like I said, I have to buy soap, so I might as well get some points for it and kind of, you know, get to my diamond level for 2023, I suppose. And then I also finally purchased the ColourPop of Quartz palette. Uh, I've had my eye on this kind of for a while because it's a fairly neutral, cool color story, which 
um, are colors I tend to gravitate towards. So I did use this today. So let me pull out a brush here. So I used Transform all over the lid and then I used um, a bit of Mind Games in the like inner corner over the lid. Uh, I used some of Sayo, I guess that is, underneath the lash line and I used some of In the Zone on the crease and Granite Access a little bit in the outer corners. So it's a pretty subtle eye look, but I think I will really enjoy this. Just as kind of an easy everyday palette. I don't have to work too hard to make it work. I don't have to think too hard about it. This will be a great palette to grab before I go to work in the morning, that kind of thing. So um, I'm happy that I finally picked that up. And yeah, I think ColourPop's formula I think more often than not, I kind of go into it with low expectations and it ends up surprising me. But as far as like the looks that I try to get out of their palettes, like I think, you know, the mattes blend well. I get a nice level of reflect from the metallics. So I don't know, there's not much more I can ask of them really. And, and it just so happens that I did pick up quite a few ColourPop um, palettes from Ulta in the last couple months here. So. So um, moving on to my next order again, I think they had the same like $10 off coupon. Uh, and this is where things I think start to go a little bit sour with my Ulta purchases. Uh, so I had purchased both the, uh, the Ballad palette from ColourPop. Um, and part of it was, you know, same idea in terms of the color story. I don't think I'd tried any of their like five pans in plastic before, so I thought I'd pick this up. And yeah, it has some interesting colors. Um, obviously these are very kind of everyday friendly and then you can go much more dramatic. Uh, and I did just kind of like the names as well because I'm silly like that. So um, the names are, I don't know if it goes from left to right. Uh, but it's novel, epic, drama, fate, and prose. And I was an English major in college, um, an English and history double major, and I also, I did forensics in high school and a little bit in college as well. I don't know if that means anything to anyone. It's not like CSI, it's like basically speech club. So I would kind of perform like short stories in a competitive setting, like do all the voices, kind of like you do in audiobooks. Um, so. That's my level of geekdom. Um, but anyway, it just kind of struck a little bit of a chord with that. Um, and side note, uh, the Natasha Denona, I think it's, is it Sunset palette, the bigger one? I think I have the Sunrise. Yeah, the Sunrise is the midi, but I think her Sunset palette is the bigger, older style of palette where it has like the foam and everything. And that has gone on sale for like half off, but I can't bring myself to buy it. I, d I don't really want it that bad other than the kind of collector in me and like having it as a YouTuber, but there's a shade in that palette called Obad, A-U-B-A-D-E, um, which is a literary term for like a poem or a song that you sing to your lover in the morning, like the morning after. And the fact that it's in the Sunset palette just doesn't sit right with me. I don't know if Natasha Denona was thinking, well, it's the sunset leading into the morning. I, I don't know. So that's the really kind of superficial reason holding me back from purchasing that palette. In addition to the fact that I don't need another warm palette, but anyway. So I purchased the Ballad palette and I also purchased the Sorbet quad. Um, I've had pretty good luck with these little quads. Uh, I had purchased the uh, from their astrology series, the Like a Virgo, which I just wore the other day. So that is Like a Virgo, very pretty. And then also the, is it Capricorn in Charge? Um, so I've also worn this one before. And of course I purchased the one for my own sign, even though um, it's all very kind of reds and oranges and that's not typically what I go for, but I'm a fire sign, so what can you do? Um, so yeah, I purchased this Sorbet palette. It's kind of similar to the, now that I've just put it in the box, kind of similar to the like a Virgo palette, but uh, this one is the like a Virgo and this one is the Sorbet. So a little bit more kind of pink rosy. And this shade, is a little bit more of a duochrome. So 
Um, I think enough of a difference, but I don't know if you need both necessarily. So uh, what I was saying about these orders kind of starting to go downhill, the Ballad and Sorbet palettes both arrived broken. You know, typical Ulta, they just kind of throw everything in a box. Obviously they reshipped them. I think I'm supposed to send these back, although really. Um, so yeah, so you can kind of see just in the package, this one is pretty well messed up. And then this one, the Ballad, yeah. So a little bit beyond what I thought I could just kind of press back or fix. And of course, Ulta did make me send them pictures of the broken palettes before I uh, got the replacements, which, you know, I understand that people are probably trying to take advantage of them on a daily basis, but a little annoying. Okay, so that I think was it for the ColourPop. Uh, so I did also get a Laura Mercier blush. This is the blush color infusion in ginger. This isn't what I'm wearing today, uh, but I kind of have an idea for a future video. So I wanted to pick this up. It's a little bit more, I guess, peachy than I would probably go for normally, but I think it's light enough and neutral enough I can get away with it. Um, so yeah, so I finally picked that up. And then I also picked up another one of the um, Drunk Elephant TLC Glycolic Body Lotions. Uh, I have gone through a full one of these. So I just pulled this out of my empties. And uh, side note, um, Hope Mess Tom had a Instagram story where they basically said how empties videos are stupid. I'm paraphrasing. Uh, but Yes, I did. I did kind of pick this up off the bathroom floor and I might just go ahead and throw this in the recycling now that I can show it to you instead of holding on to it until I do a future body care empties where this one could very well be empty by then. Uh, so this is a body lotion. It has a 10% AHA blend with marula and shea butters, pH of 3.5. Uh, so I first, I think, purchased this because Kaki Reviews Beauty talked about it kind of being the game changer in her battle against her KP or keratosis pilaris, which I also have. Um, so I decided to give it a shot and I do really like it. Uh, I think a couple things. One, you want to be careful when you're using AHAs on your um, on your body that isn't going to be covered by sunscreen if you're not very good about that. So I try not to use this in the morning if I think I'm going to be going outside later. Um, so that's just kind of my own hang up about it, I guess. But that's kind of, I guess, diminished the amount of times I use it. Uh, so that is kind of the texture. It's a very kind of light lotiony texture, very easy to rub in. I can also get eczema on my body, so I haven't noticed it giving me eczema. Um, so I just wanted to share my experience. Of course, yours may be different. Uh, and then just a quick comparison to this product from First Aid Beauty. This is the KP Smoothing Body Lotion with 10% AHA. So they're supposed to have the same AHA level, but I don't know what the pH of this is. So in my very kind of anecdotal uh, observations. I think the Drunk Elephant has been doing a better job at kind of keeping my my arms feeling smooth. Um, this one from uh, First Aid Beauty is a much kind of thicker texture. Hopefully you can kind of see that. Um, so I think the First Aid Beauty one might also have a stronger kind of acidic smell to it. Uh, if you've ever tried, I'm just like rubbing it on my legs now so I don't waste it. Uh, if you've ever tried like amlactin or that kind of thing, which is a lactic acid based body lotion, they, they can kind of have a smell to them. So that's another thing where uh, sometimes I just want to be aware of where I'm about to go and what I'm about to do before I use some of these products. Like I think the ideal scenario for me anyway is to uh, use them after the shower at night and then you know I can sleep and everything can kind of absorb so 
Anyway, uh, I have really been enjoying this. I will probably repurchase this over the First Aid Beauty, and I did see that this just won the Allure Best of Beauty for 2022 as like one of the best body products. So yeah, definitely recommend looking into that. This is eight fluid ounce. I think this is in the 20-ish dollar range, somewhere in there. So it's not obviously as expensive as some drunk elephant products, but it's more expensive than I'm sure a lot of body lotions at the drugstores. So I think you just have to weigh whether it is worth it to you. I have noticed though that Ulta frequently does point multipliers on drunk elephant products. So at least you feel like you're getting a little bit more bang for your money that way. Okay, so moving on, I picked up the Ulta Beauty Complexion Crush Foundation. I've heard good things about this one. Uh, I got it in the shade Very Fair Cool. And I've heard, I think Geek Out of Water and Jen Phelps both speak really highly of this. Um, I haven't even swatched the shade. So I can go ahead and do that. Um, you get your standard one fluid ounce. Uh, and side note, it says it's 29 milliliters. I know a lot of people kind of dwell on whether a foundation is a full ounce, if it's a little bit less than an ounce or a little bit more than an ounce. My theory on that, I know this says 29 mil. I don't know if 30 mil is supposed to be equivalent to one fluid ounce. My theory anyway is that a lot of brands are trying to hit a certain milliliter to market towards the, the rest of the world. Whatever the ounce happens to be to address the US market, they just kind of slap it on there. Um, that's that's my theory anyway. All right, so this has a seal. So that's what it looks like, fairly light, but I am fairly light. That might, that might be okay actually. Not too pink and it's not too yellow. We'll see. So I might do a full phase of Ulta Beauty at one point. I always have a lot of ideas that I never quite follow through on. Uh, so anyway, so the next product is the Tweezerman Mini Cuticle Nippers. Really exciting stuff here. So um, this is what the outer packaging looks like and the long and short story of it, it looks like these were best of um, beauty for 2021 from Allure. Uh, so this is what they look like. Um, these are the ones that I've had for a while and they actually came in, I think, a little set like this. I'm not sure if this is the current packaging or if this is the current packaging, but whatever the current packaging is, um, basically it came with a tiny cuticle nipper, like a little cuticle pusher type thing and a mini nail file, um, which I don't really use for filing my nails, but you know, it's good for kind of cleaning out underneath them. So it's really handy to have those little sets and this in general is just something you kind of push together. I find it a lot easier to use and more convenient than like the larger cuticle nippers. In fact, I kind of saved, I don't know if you can see that, something that I can just take care of right here if you're not too grossed out by it. Uh, yeah, so I, I'd had this for a long while and you know, my husband would come out and ask to borrow it periodically. So I finally just kind of bought him his own um, for him to use. So the only kind of drawback to these, Tweezerman is a great brand, but like anything, eventually I think it just kind of wears out. And I've had one set of these before, thus the two different sets there, um, where it just kind of completely just, the two pieces popped apart, kind of like a wishbone. Um, so that happened at some point, but this one has been going strong. So I definitely recommend looking into that little product if you, I don't know, want a travel friendly kind of cuticle product. Um, so like I mentioned, um, I purchased this Ulta complexion product. I also got the Sparkling Leaves Candle. Um, so Ulta is definitely, I guess, trying to come for Bath and Body Works in some kind of way. Uh, this is a 15 ounce, Three wick candle. It's the same sparkling leaves scent. Um, this is a soy blend candle. So I picked this up because I enjoyed the hand soap, but I don't think this quite delivered in the way that I hoped it would. Uh, I will say that, you know, I don't know what the full price of these is. I want to say it's like 20 bucks or something, which I would not 
recommend paying full price for these. So apparently the fragrance notes are Velvet Auras, Sheer Saffron, Sparkling Cardamom, and Frosted Greens. Um, so those are the scents, and this is made in the U.S. from U.S. and imported components. Uh, so if you find these on a good sale, the sort of tunneling that's going on here, I don't think that's necessarily Candle's fault. I don't think we probably let it burn long enough. So yeah, so if you find these like on a good sale, maybe try one out just to see what you think of it, but it wouldn't be my kind of top recommendation for a good quality candle, let's just say that. I just didn't really get the like the throw and the strength from it that I would like. Uh, but anyway, I got that candle and um, there was also a specific gift with purchase with Ulta Beauty purchases, purchases from the actual Ulta Beauty brand. Um, so I guess I'll go ahead and show you this um, little guy here. Came with a little bag. I think there was a choice of two bags. Uh, and I have tried Ulta Beauty cosmetics before because I've tried their like Gilmore Girls collection, I've tried their Harry Potter collection, so uh, I'm not totally unfamiliar with their like formulas and that kind of thing. Uh, but anyway, this is a little palette, eight shades in there. Just as the eyeshadow palette, so I don't think this is something you can buy separately. So it also came with the Ulta Beauty Lash Flash Warm Water Wash Off Mascara. I need to see if this is the one that State of Kate has been talking about lately. It sounds like it could be. Oh, so it came with a cute little like makeup eraser type dupe, which I probably could have used today instead of like the washcloth that I've been using. So yeah, nothing fancy, but that's nice. Uh, there's a blush and highlighter duo. Again, it doesn't doesn't really have any shades or anything on it. There's a tinted juice infused lip oil. Again, I don't see a shade. I don't know if they made some of this specifically for the gift with purchase. Uh, there's a clear brow gel, which is nice. I think better that it's clear than some color that, you know, only a certain number of people will be able to use. Um, there is a, I guess this is a lipstick. It's in the shade Raisin. It's still shrink wrap, so I'm just gonna leave it in until I figure out what I wanna do with it. Uh, there's a mattifying face primer, which I probably will not use. And just one more thing, I think. Uh, and then there's also a matte eye primer in Nude. So um, really nice number and assortment of products, I thought. And for like a $19.50 purchase of Ulta Beauty products, like really not bad. So um, I think that also includes any of the like soaps or body care products, anything like that. I do have to say though, and again, I'll save the actual kind of unveiling for the end, but um, there was a diamond and platinum gift with purchase with a $75 purchase. And I think for one of these gifts with purchase, like I usually just more out of curiosity than anything else, uh, because sometimes they have several different options of gifts with purchase. And so I'll pick one over the other because maybe I'll see one bag has like a couple samples that I'm more interested in, that kind of thing. Uh, but anyway, they usually say it's like a 17-piece a gift, a 14-piece gift, etc., 29-piece gift. And in cases where there's an actual physical bag, you know, kind of like this, uh, they'll count the bag as one of the items, which is fine. Uh, but I think one of the gifts with purchase I got, and I'm not sure if this was because there was an item missing from the bag, but it seems like they were counting the, like the plastic bag holding the samples, like the kind of thing that you just throw away as one of the items. So it's kind of giving them major side eye after that. And side note, there was an earlier gift with purchase where one of the items actually leaked. It was this Garnier micellar water. I think just the cap was not kind of fully button down. Uh, so luckily it didn't kind of ruin anything necessarily. But anyway, that was not a, a good omen, I guess. Speaking of which, um, I did purchase an order that never arrived. So I was stuck in protracted email conversations with um, Lasership, which was the shipper they used and is not my favorite shipper, I'll just say that. Uh, and also customer service saying, you know, they say they delivered it, but I haven't gotten it. And, you know, I do live in an apartment complex, so I guess it's a little bit more complicated than just delivering to a house where you can leave it at the front door or whatever. But um, like I checked 
all the package areas in my building. I went to the leasing office. Like I, I definitely did my kind of due diligence in trying to find this package and it never showed up. So I did manage to get a refund eventually. And again, Ulta sent me a uh, shipping label to say if it ever does turn up, please send it back. But it hasn't and that was almost a month ago at this point. So, so I'll tell you what I did order. I ordered the Hugard Live Tinted Primer, I think it's called. So that's a product that State of Kate has talked a lot about, so I wanted to try it out. And like I said, the same thing with the FSA dollars and sunscreens, etc. Um, I did also order another um, mouthwash. Um, this one was the whitening mouthwash, and I actually have one because I ordered it in a subsequent order, um, along with the red carpet manicure uh, nail polish remover. So I think anyone looking at my kind of Ulta order history would not be suspicious, I guess, of me not receiving these items because, I mean, really how much mouthwash and nail polish remover does one person need at one time? Uh, so yeah, so I got that and I also ordered some like acne, like hypercholate patches that never showed up and there was another gift with purchase that I unfortunately didn't get. So moving on to, I think the first Ulta 21 Days of Beauty. So as I said, I might, uh, I did order the L'Occitane uh, body cream. Uh, this was on sale for half off, like all the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty products. So it was $24.50. And I said I was a little hesitant about this because there were a lot of really kind of negative reviews. Uh, and I realized that when I looked back in my Ulta order history, um, I think basically the same product had gone on sale in the previous 21 Days of Beauty, the fall one anyway. Yeah, I think this is the direct replacement for this product. Uh, they're both the same size, ultra rich body cream. Yeah, so I think they just kind of repackaged it for whatever reason. I'm not entirely sure their rationale for doing so. So again, this was another product I pulled out of my empties. Um, has a plastic tub and a, I think mostly metal lid. Uh, and the plastic, I think this is entirely recyclable. Um, so they've gone for like an entirely tin exterior, but um, I realized when I got it, and you can see I've been using it, I've made some progress. Um, I still have part of the lid label or whatever on top. Yeah, so they say it's the same fill size, but like looking at the pictures online, I wasn't sure kind of what these carve outs were. I wasn't sure if th there was like a plastic lip kind of thing. Uh, but I think these are actually designed, I'm not sure if I'll be able to do it. I think it's designed so that you can just pull it out, but I don't understand why that would be desirable or like any more environmentally friendly than having just a separate plastic bottom and a metal lid or an entirely metal package. So I'm a little confused by that. Uh, when I actually finish this up, maybe I'll do a little bit more of like deconstruction to kind of figure out what they were intending. They say it's refillable, which is interesting, but I don't know if Ulta sells refills. And I guess in that case, are you just saving, is there less plastic in this insert? Than in that other jar. I mean, you still have the metal lid. I guess you wouldn't have to replace the metal lid. I don't know. I'm just a little confused by it. Hopefully there's a good reason for it. Okay, editing Beth popping on to say that I did locate the refill on the Ulta website. Um, I just, I guess, wasn't looking hard enough or it didn't jump out at me. Uh, it looks like you do save $10 uh, on the refill versus the full size. However, um, I did look back at my Ulta order history again, and um, I saw that the original packaging, or the one previous to this one anyway, uh, was $44 versus $49. Uh, so I don't know if that is partly due to inflation or uh, if it's more expensive to do the refills this way, but I just thought I would point out that price difference. Uh, so anyway, so I got that. I got more tea tree cleanser for my husband because that was on sale. And then um, I did get the ColourPop Citrus Fizz Quad. So this one um, wasn't destroyed, um, but the kind of more, I guess, super shock 
shade here. It was almost like that Hope shade in the ABH palette that I got where it was kind of like the top was like lifted almost. Um, it was kind of the same deal. So I kind of just pressed it back and it seems like it's doing okay. So I don't think that's as much like an Ulta thing as just kind of like that's just the nature of the formulation. But anyway, uh, and I already talked about the Becca corrector. I will say that I think I had a, like a $15 gift card to Target, you know, that you get from... I don't know, buying your laundry detergent or whatever. Um, so I was able to use that on this. So that was really great. Um, I think I also got my like 5% red card savings. Um, so big fan of that. Okay, and then moving on, I got two of the new Milani products. I got their contour and highlighter. Um, so I still kind of have it in mind to do a Charlotte Tilbury dupe video uh, that I've kind of been planning since e.l.f. came out with its like Hollywood Flawless Filter Dupe, but you know, it's just one of those things where the momentum is there or it isn't and you're, you know, just trying to kind of pick the right moment to do it. Um, but anyway, I did use these today and I have to say they're not my like new favorite products. So I'll demo this more in depth in that like video eventually, but um, so I applied the contour underneath my neck. I did it on both sides of the nose and then along my cheek. When I blended it out on my cheek, it did kind of cover a pretty sizable portion of my face. Um, I do have blush and bronzer and everything on top of it. I guess you can kind of see the highlighter there. I just the highlighter kind of on the tops of my cheekbones and a little bit maybe down the nose. It's pretty subtle really. I was able to blend it out fairly well but it, for a while there it was looking a little streaky and the applicators of these are really tiny which on the one hand is good because you can be more precise, but compared to like the Charlotte Tilbury products, it was just a little bit unexpected, I guess. Um, so there's the contour and you can tell it's a little bit more of a liquid bronzer shade or a lot more even than what I usually look for in a contour. So for reference, this is the KBD contour, which is my go-to. So hopefully you can see the tone difference. And also the KVD is just kind of more sheer, so it's a little bit easier to blend out. This is the Fenty Matchstick in Amber. So hopefully that gives you a good look. Uh, and this is the Hollywood Beauty Light Wand, which I'm sure everyone has seen a million times. So the difference with this is that the cap just kind of pops off. I didn't dispense any more product, but hopefully you can just kind of get it, get a sense of the difference in tone and reflect there. Yeah, I wouldn't say these are dead on dupes by any means. And you can see the difference in the kind of applicator there as well. Okay, so another drugstore product I picked up, I got the little e.l.f. bite size eyeshadow quad in pumpkin pie. Uh, so this is not a new uh, shade selection from them. And I've had, you know, different quads of theirs before, but I just, I don't know wanted to embrace the pumpkin pie this season. So that is the quad. Uh, I did kind of create my own custom pumpkin spice latte quad using Viseart shadows, if you haven't seen that. Um, I might as well just swatch those next to each other. I'm thinking about doing kind of a whole pumpkin spice video, but I don't know if I'll get around to it or not. This one has a much more kind of orangey terracotta. So that is my quad next to the e.l.f. one. Let me know which one you like better. This to me reads a little bit more, where is it? This shade to me reads a little bit more pumpkin, whereas this is just kind of more of the spice, more of the pumpkin spice, I would say. Um, so while I am removing these, um, the next product I got was the KVD Good Apple Foundation in the shade Light 006. Uh, so KVD is another brand I'm thinking of doing a full face of. And of course the Good Apple Foundation kind of went viral. Everyone lost their mind over it. I'd actually purchased the Good Apple Concealer without having the like original product um, at first. Uh, but yeah, anyway, this was on sale for $20.25. So it was half off as a surprise deal during the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty. And I am wearing it today. So this is the first time I've worn it. I will say the texture was more emollient than I was expecting. Like 
I think you can kind of see the dent I was able to make into it uh, without really trying. It's just, it's very slippy, but like on the face, you know, it's been a little while since I did my skincare and everything. And I had applied sunscreen earlier. And then um, before I started to do my makeup, I went back in with the, the Essence um, Glow Serum Primer. Um, and honestly, I was just not loving the way it looked right off the bat. Keep in mind, as I'm showing you this now, that um, I've been sitting here for about an hour without any air conditioning and it is 75 degrees outside. So I think it's settled in a little bit, but at first application, I don't think it was looking great on my dry skin. I know Teresa is dead, really likes this product, and she, of course, loves the Ritual Defeat Thorn Oil. She has dry skin as well, so I don't know if like having the Ritual Defeat as like a really, really super moisturizing base makes this apply a little bit easier. What I did was I kind of put my finger in it and kind of dotted it around like I normally would with the foundation. Um, I did try to blend it out with a beauty blender, a dampened beauty blender, and that just wasn't really working well to kind of spread out the product. So then I did go in with my um, expert face brush wherever I put it. So jury's still out on that one, but I will say it's looking better now than it did when I first applied it. Uh, I also did end up getting the Clarins Total Eye Lift. Um, I kind of caved. So this was $44.50 half off. Um, this is another product that Geek Out of Water Shelly um, really loves. And I think one of the things that kind of pushed me over the edge was the fact that it's in a pump uh, because I kind of go back and forth between having shorter and longer nails and having a pump where you can kind of put some on the back of your hand and then apply it. It's a lot easier with long nails than trying to stick your finger in a pot um, and pick up product that way. So uh, yeah, I guess by the time I finish this one, I will have a very good opinion of the product. I think I'd said in my Ulta 21 Days of Beauty video that I had some little samples of it and I don't know, I was just not really sure what I thought of it. So uh, I do still miss having the, this is another skincare product that I pulled out of my empties because I finished it after I filmed my skincare empties video that I still have to edit and upload. But um, yeah, this is again, a pump eye cream. And this is the Skin Fix Barrier Plus Lipid Boost 360i. Yeah, I just, I really kind of fell in love with this product. So I, I've gone through, I think this is at least the third one that I went through. And texture wise, it's kind of like, it's not, the most kind of emollient feeling when you first dispense it, but then when you kind of start to rub it in, it almost feels like you're just rubbing an oil, if that makes any sense. Uh, and I found that this was really kind of friendly to my dry under eyes and my like, you know, eczema prone face skin. Like I think I said in a video not too long ago that I was getting some little eczema spots, which I think are largely gone now. But yeah, as the weather gets colder, <laughs> thank God, uh, I do start to gird myself for winter skin. So anyway, uh, so yeah, we'll see how that goes. Can't make any promises as to whether it will be a new favorite. Uh, so yeah, so like I said earlier, I also finally got the red carpet manicure. Um, I take that by the way and refill this Zoya big flipper. Uh, you can purchase this flipper from Ulta, but you can't purchase the larger refills at Ulta. You have to go to, I think, the Zoya website. Uh, so it's more cost effective to buy this guy. This is 16 fluid ounce and just pour it into this. Um, so basically this, you know, you can lock it and unlock it, and then you would take your cotton pad and squeeze down and it would dispense up. So uh, this red carpet manicure polish remover um, is kind of a new favorite, both for the um, cost. It's pretty cost effective. Uh, it is, I think, acetone based. So it's meant to remove gel polish. So it's effective, but also friendlier to your nail than just pure acetone, which is what I was using before. Yeah, the first ingredient is acetone. And also one of my main complaints about nail polish remover is when, is when you'll take off your nail polish and then even if you wash your hands sometimes, like you'll, you'll eat something or whatever where you know, you stick your fingers in your mouth and you can taste it. Like, I just can't stand that. Um, a lot of times, like washing my hair or something is the only thing that kind of like gets it off. Uh, so yeah, this red carpet manicure 
doesn't seem to do that. So I'm a huge fan of that. Um, and that is one of the key reasons why I also fell in love with the Zoya Remove Plus over 10 years ago. I think it's one of the very first videos I ever uploaded to YouTube and I think it's still up. So <laughs> if you'd like to see my video quality from 10 years ago, you're welcome. Uh, and then the last order I'm going to share with you before I get into the gifts with purchase, the last 21 days of beauty purchase that I placed was for um, the MAC Glow Play blushes. Finally got my hands on a couple of these. Uh, so I got Blush Please, which is what I'm wearing today. I used the BK A507 brush, which I think these kind of paired nicely together. And then I also got the shade Cheer Up which always makes me think of Bully Wonka, like the old 1960s version. Cheer up, Charlie. Give me a smile. Uh, and then I got a couple of things, a few things that showed up in the most recent Allure Best of Beauty for 2022. Uh, I may or may not film a video. I always start to accumulate items to film a video and then I never end up doing it, but um, these were some items that I'd kind of had my eye on in a way, or, you know, at least they weren't too expensive, so I decided to go for it. Uh, so I got the L'Oreal Bronzer in the shade 200 Fair. Um, so that is what I'm wearing today. Um, it's a little bit, I guess, powdery. It's not like the softest type bronzer, but I think it is a nice shade for my skin tone and it did apply very nicely with my um, refer 22 brush uh, and I just quickly wanted to swatch it against the Gucci blush they're in the same ballpark you know the Gucci is more it, it feels smoother yeah and it still has I think a little bit more red a little bit more rosiness in it than the L'Oreal, but I think the L'Oreal is definitely a solid option if you have fair skin and you want a good drugstore bronzer. I mean, I'm like the millionth person to say that it's okay, you know, with the with the Allure awards and everything like that. And then I got two of the Maybelline vinyl, what are these called? Super Stay Vinyl Inks. Um, so I got the shades Cheeky and Witty. Uh, I'm wearing Cheeky today, which for me is a very nice, like, My Lips But Better shade. I think you're supposed to shake these, which I always forget. Uh, I do like that the outer packaging is different colors. So that is the shade Cheeky. Uh, and then the shade Witty, I have tried on. It's a little bit darker. But these won the, like, one of the Allure, what do they call it? Like, breakouts or innovations or whatever. Uh, and those were buy one, get one, half off. So just a couple notes. Um... You know, they call it Super Stay. It's not a transfer-proof formula, um, as you can kind of see from my straw. And if I just, I mean, there is some transfer there, and I think some of it has worn off. It says it's a pretty comfortable formula. Still feels a tiny bit tacky, but I would rather have that than it be like super drying. And I think there is maybe still a slight sheen. Let me see if I can go ahead and reapply here. All right, so we just had a little um, tea break, tea intermission for my husband. But uh, yeah, I think, you know, it feels very comfortable. Like I said, I don't think it's the most transfer proof or kind of budge proof formula. Uh, I do like this shade though. And I'm kind of curious how the red shades would fare, like if they would be a mess or if they would kind of mostly stay put. So anyway, I was happy to be able to try those products. Uh, okay, so I think that is it for everything I have purchased, um, if that wasn't long enough. Uh, and then I will try to quickly go through um, all the gifts with purchase in no particular order. We're just kind of doing this like grab bag style. So, and you can kind of see how that my cellar water that spilled kind of made a mess. So. Uh, anyway, Urban Decay 24-7 pencil in black. I wish they would start sending out different shades other than black because I have enough of those. 
Uh, I have the Peach and Lily Pure Peach Retinoic Eye Cream. Uh, like I said, I do have dry under eyes, but I also kind of get some like flakiness. So sometimes I want to use like a Cuchiol or retinol based eye cream to try and exfoliate that skin. So I've pulled this out to start testing it, but I haven't really given it a fair shot yet. The Dermalogica Circular Hydration Serum. There's that. The Vichy Aqua Aqualia Thermal. I don't know, some type of moisturizer it looks like. Really cute little jar for a sample. Uh, another Clarins Total Eye Lift sample. Uh, we have the Bum Bum Bumble Hairdresser's Invisible Oil. Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara. The Peter Thomas Roth even smoother glycolic retinol resurfacing serum. This has 10% glycolic acid. I think I'm a little scared to try that. Uh, I have some, I don't know, some kind of supplement, digestive enzymes and herbs for supporting digestive health. Okay. Uh, so it's always nice when you get an ordinary sample because usually it's full size. So this is the ordinary hyaluronic acid, 2% with B5. This is a one fluid ounce pipette type jar, I think. Uh, I'll give my usual spiel about just be careful with hyaluronic acid because it could be pulling water from your skin if it doesn't have anything to pull into your skin. So if you live in a super dry environment, that kind of thing. Uh, I already dug into these and finished them. These are the Hero Mighty Patch Hydrocolloids. So these are really good at kind of drawing out whiteheads. Uh, I have a whey leave-in conditioner. This is, I think, probably my favorite leave-in conditioner and I've gone through many of the full sizes. In fact, I just took one of these sample sizes and like poured it into the full size so I could use it up that way. Uh, but yeah, always happy to get one of those. Uh, the IT Cosmetics Hello Results Glycolic Peel and Caring Oil. Is this just one product? Looks like it. Might be some kind of biphase interesting. Again, I'm kind of shying away from super strong HAs on my face these days. Uh, the La Roche-Posay Purifying Foaming Cleanser. Let's see, the Virtue Recovery Conditioner Heals Retinol Fast Release Wrinkle Reducing Night Serum. Uh, the Josie Marin Whipped Argan Oil in Be True. This is unscented, so I think I just saw khaki have one of these in her empties. Um, I finished the the citrus one that I got in my FabFitFun and I did enjoy that. So um, this will be a nice little travel size. Let's see, Shiseido Wrinkle Smoothing Eye Cream, Sunday Riley A Plus High Dose Retinoid Serum. So this is the Virtue Recovery Shampoo. So the uh, counterpart to the conditioner. I have a Tarte Maneater Waterproof Mascara sample. Is the waterproof version of Maneater new? It, it might be. Uh, we have the Pixie Glow Tonic, Paracon MD Cold Plasma Plus, another CeraVe Hydrating Facial Cleanser. I don't think I'll ever have to purchase this stuff because I've gotten so many samples, but um, it is a very nice um, gentle cleanser for dry skin. Happy Dance Whipped Body Butter with CBD. Olaplex number six, Bond Smoother. This is the leave-in styling treatment. So this might be the Urban Decay pencil I talked about. Uh, Kylie Skin Clarifying Gel Cream, don't care. Uh, Dermalogica Circular, okay, so this is the Dermalogica product I think I talked about. The Aven uh, Cleansing Gel and the Origins Ginseng Glow Boosting Mask. And then finally a Tula Brightening Treatment Drops, vitamin C. All right, so that was it for that bag. Uh, and then in this one, I have the Murad Rapid Dark Spot Correcting Serum. The This Works Deep Sleep Pillow Spray. Um, these are really nice, especially for traveling, like if you have trouble sleeping in a strange environment. Uh, the Ellis Brooklyn B Perfume. I'm not a huge fan of honey notes, but I am intrigued by Ellis Brooklyn. The Living Proof Full Dry Volume and Texture Spray. So this is a mini uh, Moschino, Moschino perfume. Uh, this is Toy Boy. Uh, I collect mini perfumes, so I have a couple videos on my channel all about that. So that one is cute. It's the same basic shape as some of the other ones from them, but uh, the Kapari Coconut Crush Scrub. I didn't end up purchasing the Kapari 
body butter. I just decided that there were other ones I liked better, so might as well not buy it. Uh, the Maley's B Tight Lift and Firm Booty Mask. Derma E Advanced Peptides and Collagen Serum. This is another, could be full size. I like that they have a expiration date on the bottom. That's handy. Maybe. It's like a little pump. Uh, we have Hask uh, Tea Tree Oil and Rosemary Hair and Scalp Treatment Mask. Another allure symbol there. Uh, the Sun Bum 3-in-1 Leave-In. Hit confidence in a cream anti-aging armor. Uh, another perfume here. This one is Victor and Rolf Bonbon. Very cute little bottle. I need to check to see if I already have this one. I'm pretty sure I already have this one from Versace Yellow Diamond. Um, if I have duplicates, I try to put these in a giveaway, which I still need to do. Um, I got kind of reluctant to do it when there's so much like scam stuff going on. Slick Skin Essential Lipid Serum, not familiar with that. Uh, a snack. So this is the Grande Cosmetics Grande Gummies Vegan Collagen Booster. These are citrus flavor. I don't tend to buy gummies because I try to avoid the excess sugar, but um, if I have it, I might as well eat it, right? Uh, we have the Purity Therapy Calming Relief Cream with Artemisia. That's interesting. A MAC Fix Plus. Uh, a Rapid Glam Eyelash Enhancing Mascara. Uh, the Voir Sunset Ritual Signature Conditioner. The Derma E Thickening Shampoo and Conditioner. The Florence by Mills Up in the Clouds Facial Moisturizer with Blue Light Protection. The Heels Eye Zone Treatment. The Coats, I think it is. SPF 40 Mineral Sunscreen Primer. Uh, this expires by December of 2022. So at least it's not expired, but that doesn't give me a lot of time. At least it's only mineral. I get a lot of sunscreen samples I can't use because I only use mineral. Uh, the way Detox Shampoo, this might be a good like travel size. And then let's see, we have the Rock Retinol, Retinol and Hyaluronic Acid Serum. Another benefit precisely my brow. Little sample in warm light brown. So cute how little those are. Uh, we have the IGK Legendary Dream Hair Shampoo and Conditioner. So I do have the full sizes of these because they were in a Fat Fit Fun. Um, I like them okay. I wouldn't say they're my favorite, but they're okay. Uh, and then finally, I think this was maybe a substitution because they do that sometimes. This is the Ralph Lauren Polo Earth Eau de Toilette. Um, I think this also won an Allure Best of Beauty for like best earthy fragrance or something. Um, but it's a really nice, how big is this? Third of an ounce or 10 mils. That's kind of your standard travel size. And it also has, you know, the little cap. So um, what can I spray with this? Might as well spray this. It's been through enough already. Um, so I'm not sure what the notes are, but I kind of like it. Um, it reminds me a bit of the, is it Ellis Brooklyn Sci-Fi? that has like a green tea note. Yeah, no idea what this is supposed to smell like, but I like it. I think this is supposed to be a unisex and I can definitely see that being the case. Super fresh. All right, so that is it for my super long Ulta haul. Um, it'll probably be the last one for a while here, but I'll probably do some kind of Sephora focused videos um, coming up in the next month or so as we approach the VIB sale. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed this or found it interesting. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions down below. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, I encourage you to do so. And until next time, I hope you guys are all doing well and staying safe. And I will talk to you soon.